It's loosely derived from a project that an artist named Liam Gillick did in 1992 when he, uh, he invited other artists to, uh, to uh, give him instructions for works uh, which he then produced for them as part of the exhibition. The way that I felt doing this was effective was to, to actually actively collaborate with other, with other artists and to work with them with their ideas and develop, um, develop projects alongside them and with them. I guess the first piece I'll talk about is actually outside the gallery in the window space of the, of the alternator, which is in the hallway. And um, it's a piece that I, that, uh, I did with uh, Monica Gordon. Monica, Monica had uh, gave me an instruction that was to sort of look into a, 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 like an invisible art history that isn't, well, create a visual representation of, of a history that's not necessarily been made apparent in, in Kelowna or ha that, hasn't, that people don't necessarily know about and that could be revealed. After doing quite a bit of research, it was quite, I found it quite difficult to kind of access uh, history that wasn't, um, that wasn't quite sort of cut and dry and very, very like written by a historian kind of thing, like in terms of the, in terms of like actually texts or something like that. Um, but what I did find was a book by um, Ursula Surtees, who was the former, I think she was the former director of the museum here. There was, uh, I think, one page devoted to uh, the entire history of the of the valley previous prior to a uh, first contact, and then the entire rest of the book was devoted to the period of 1812 till the present, basically. And I was really interested in the sense that there was this entirely other, much larger history that was completely unrepresented within this supposedly uh, authoritative text. A small section of photographs that are affixed to the window represent the time that's actually been documented in the last 200 years, and everything else is the, that's left empty is this space that has no has no record basically, or that it has no official record within the history. And I thought it was a really interesting way to sort of make people or get people to think about how much is actually left out when when thinking about the the way these stories are written and the way that the way that we understand. Um, our past. Erica makes uh, videos, uh, well, animations that are um, based on traditional German stories or fairy tales. And what she was interested in, what, from from your uh, from your description, was the the idea of making of bringing these stories to a, to another generation. I think we both agreed that it would be very difficult in the time frame that I have to to actually like make an entire entire one of these videos. What I tried to do was was give a um, Create something. Uh, we'll try and try and give some kind of feedback for Erica, I suppose, and produce something that sh that could maybe be used in a future, uh, like a, in a remake of, of one of these videos. So I did a series of character designs, and then I also uh, um, uh, built a, an online survey. And Erica has her videos on YouTube, and I sent the sent the survey out to to basically my entire email list and asked people to respond with with their feedback and what they could, what in ways that they thought that uh, that the videos could be improved or things that are that could be done to to um, add more to the story or to to refine it in certain ways. A piece that I did with um... hey Jake, what's Camilla's last name? Uh, Picard. Picard, right. The piece that she, she proposed was a, was a sort of like uh, a post-apocalyptic tribute to, uh, to the time when, when there are no more pit, when we might uh, sort of uh, pine for, uh, for pigeons when, they, when they've left the city. We decided that we'd build, that I would build this uh, cinder block wall that would kind of affect a kind of architectural space and then, um, and then uh, project onto it uh, uh, images of pigeons or something like that and use like a, a soundtrack um, to kind of uh, bring out this kind of like sense of loss or, or the end of pigeons. Uh, and the way that I dealt with it was uh, I filmed them, those on uh, Pandosi Street just on top of a building. I just uh, extended the length of the video like a, like changed the duration of the video so it would be uh, 10% of its original speed, so it's slow motion, and then it slowly, uh, slowly fades out into darkness. Uh, the next piece is uh, that this uh, ordinary-looking garbage can, which uh, is a piece that uh, that uh, I developed from some instructions provided by uh, by Gail, who's right over there. 
and it would be addressing the like relationship between like atten attention and reading and and uh, and, uh, and and television basically. Um, and we we went and got this this sort of older television set. Well, I was sort of like puzzling over what to do with it, and then put it in a garbage can one day and felt like that sort of sort of like encapsulated the the mood of that piece. But it also like when it was set up with a sensor, it just looks like an average garbage can, but when you when you trip the sensor, um, it turns the turns the TV on. So I wonder if we can do it. it creates this sort of like blue glow. So it's like this thing that like draws your attention, but is also like kind of kind of mysterious. The next piece is a is a painting that I that I did from instructions from uh, Miranda Ashenbrenner. Miranda's Miranda's instructions were quite straightforward in that like she gave me a very specific technique that I could follow to do a painting and. Paint it with abstract shapes, uh, and then on a, on board, and then break it up into pieces, and then uh, constru reconstruct all those pieces back together, and then again, and then do a new painting on top of it. So it's this kind of so so it breaks down a sense of uh, of being able to like control how things are going to go, or there's it develops a tension between um, between order and chaos, or something like that. The next piece is a uh, is a drawing and a small text. Uh, which I did in collaboration with uh, Kevin McPherson Eckhoff. So what, what Kevin proposed to me was that he, he wanted me to uh, to uh, sort of ask a, a series of different people what they thought the word Okanagan meant. From the from that research, uh, I I did a a sort of composite drawing, which I was sort of would try and encapsulate all those meanings into into one thing, into one image that would be distinctive of the Okanagan. But at the same time, it's kind of like I think plays on the on the sort of uh, problems of, of democracy in a way of in determining in trying to determine a meaning through like consensus in that there was basically no kind of consensus. The next piece is um, a piece that I did with uh, Sue who's right here um, and Sue helped me out a lot and this is hey Dave what's your last name? Johnson. Dave Johnson. Dave is the actor that was in the video. So what Sue proposed was a um, was uh, two two videos that would um, play simultaneously. One would be a video of uh, of a guy who's who walks into his office building, and then he sits down at his desk, and uh, and proceeds to build a the mo a model of a house out of uh, out of uh, paper like a printer paper. And then the other the other um, piece is a, a view of another house made of paper that's uh, just lit lit on fire and burns and burns away into ashes, and it sits on top of a stone. Um, I used the, this sort of structure as a set for where I would burn the burn the house down, and then uh, and then uh, could in, could sort of include the whole structure as part of as part of the uh, the installation afterwards. So then you still get the the traces of the burns on the on the sides of the uh, sides of the blocks and things like that. The last piece I'll talk about is uh, the collaboration I did with uh, with Chad Cratch. Um, so Chad, what Chad wanted to do was. Um, was like create these these really outlandish uh, updates that were that would totally get that would get people really like uh, you know doing a lot of like really commenting on Facebook or like that would that would make people really sort of shocked by what, what we were doing these sort of bizarre things um, and then we treated it as kind of a, a well we treated it as a as a competition so so what you see is just is documentation from the various performances which involved I mean. Everything from Chad doing somersaults for 15 minutes straight. Uh, I wore a fake beard at the same time. Uh, Chad tried to drink 15 Slurpees in 15 minutes, um, and he did nine. Nine in no. 25 minutes. Yeah, nine in 25 minutes, and then yeah, literally impossible. And then you'll know there's a there's a nice image there of Chad uh, Chad uh, getting rid of the Slurpees. I did a couple pieces. Uh, perched between two buildings on Bernard Street and playing frisbee with myself for 15 minutes, which is really a good workout.